Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and in front of me are parts for my bit of weight. Uh, this is all of the parts for Not Again, which is, or some of the parts for my bit of weight, Not Again, which is a 1.3 uh, beta bar spinner. Now, uh, this is actually in pieces because its first outing at Maker Faire last year didn't go so well. I had a lot of issues with this, uh, mostly the fact that the drum kept breaking after every hit. That was either because uh, I had a PLA piece on there or an ABS piece on there and the PLA green pieces broke in around this line and the ABS pieces ended up breaking down the layer lines because I'm not very good at printing uh, ABS and so these came out quite weak. Even when I tried my hardest to give them some more rigidity and some structure, they would always break down those lines, which is a bit of a problem when that's the only thing keeping the actual drum onto the robot. Uh, I also had some kind of drive issues as well, and I, actually, I think I pegged that down to one of the motors had a loose gearbox, which meant it wasn't turning at quite the right speed, so I think that's what that was. I'm really hoping that's what that was, because I don't actually have any extra room inside the robot to increase the size of the wheels, which is one of the ways you can uh, improve a drive issue like that. Uh, then uh, there was a little bit of a weight issue as well. I was pushing right up close to the weight line on that. And I mean, that also does mean that uh, a lot of the weight was forwards too, because it has the very big beta bar in front. And I also had some very, very, very thick uh, pieces of abative armor, which as you can see, they got hit and they didn't really break all that much. I mean, some of the, uh, the aluminium came off of them, but these things are supposed to break when they get hit. That's what abative armor is all about. Um, so, right now we're going to redo this whole build uh, and make some fixes and some changes. Some of these I've already started working on, which are over here. So one of the big things is I've changed my abate of armor from I think about six mil down to about three mil. So these are gonna sit out on the sides and take the hits for me. I might still add some aluminum to them just to make them last a little bit longer, but I'm planning on printing a bunch of these and taking them all with me. And then we're also going to upgrade from ABS or PLA to TPU. TPU obviously is one of my favorite materials to print with. This stuff is flexible and amazing. It is ridiculously strong when you flex it. And yeah, I'm hoping that this material is going to uh, take up some of that issue that was happening with those uh, pieces there. Now, I was planning originally to mill or machine these particular blocks. However, my CNC has only just come up and running at this point in time. Uh, I'm recording this a few weeks ago uh, from when it's gonna be released. So I am not confident yet to try and machine out something this complicated on that, that brand new CNC. The other issue, of course, was that I was using rubber bands like this to run the drive belt. And these things started like fusing together and breaking and stuff during fights. So once again, TPU to the rescue. I've printed myself a little TPU belt which fits nicely in the gaps here and should hopefully be quite a strong belt to run this weapon. Now, the other thing too is I'm undecided yet as to whether I'm gonna run this weapon, which is 350 grams, or if I'm gonna drop back down to 300 or 250 grams. I'll find that out as I build this thing and put it all together and see how it all drives and controls and stuff like that. Uh, the main sections of the robot are made out of HTPE. These are gonna stay as they are. And then the rubber, the TPU corners and things that hold on the outer shell are gonna stay as they are as well. So we're gonna do a very, very quick build of this. I may not even show that because I did show it last time in a very long-winded form. Uh, so we'll get that built up and then we're going to take it to my monthly meets and we will see how these improvements and changes have gone. Okay, so here we go. This is the first match uh, for my beta weight up against a robot called Sorted History. It's a brushless thwack bot. It's an old brushless drive, which I find quite impressive in beta weights. And yeah, we got off to a relatively good start, but very quickly I realized that I'm having a little bit of issue with the left wheel, and then the worst happens. The drum explodes just like that. I got a nice, nice big hit uh, by the thwack onto the, uh, the drum, and it just broke. And that left me without a weapon, so I was just down to a pushing match, and as I said, I was still having drive issues. I think I've penned this down to the fact that the... Uh, 
the wheels themselves kind of ground out or the the shaft on the motors ground out the wheels and i just was not getting any push out of it and as you can see it then led me to go into the pit and then we have the second and unfortunately final fight uh for my beetle weight i did manage to replace the broken um, weapon mount from the first fight. I didn't bring many spares, so this was very, very lucky that I actually managed to have one up and running. And off the mark, we both got our weapons up and running, but as you can see, I was still having these driver issues. And my opponent had had his weapon broken in a previous fight, so he decided to not hit me with the weapon and push me around, and bam. Hang on, and we're going to see that just once again, because this was huge damage. And then, yeah, the actual going back to the fight, I just got pushed into the pit and yeah I really couldn't do too much the weapon was gone and at this point that hit also completely destroyed some of the wheels so we were done and dusted this was it completely and totally so I'm just left sitting here on the edge of the pit and I got counted out um, because for some reason he decided he didn't want to hit me with his weapon despite the fact that I was in no danger of doing any damage to him at all um, yeah, so unfortunately that is the way that went. The improvements didn't really seem to help all that much. And this is the result of that huge hit. So basically what's happened is the plastic has separated. Uh, so the way all of this stuff is kind of held together, this internal frame is held to not only itself, but also this base plate. Um, yeah, and I think basically the base plate and a couple of little 3D printed brackets really hold everything together. And on this side, I was kind of very pushed for space. So I found that uh, I had to use some pretty thin pieces of plastic and uh, those thin pieces of plastic just exploded. They just annihilated themselves and also the, uh, the top plate up here broke just in along there, which is what held uh, this the top of this frame out and the reason all of that exploded is because I actually managed to stop the weapon mounts from breaking so these are the two weapon mounts I had on at the time of the explosion and one of them is just TPU with a wrap of aluminium tape and that stopped it from breaking where it broke before which is really really interesting so I don't really need all that much extra strength here I just need it to be stronger in this direction so I think uh, the next version is going to have some HDPE uh, cut and lathed pieces so that they're made from a solid chunk of material and they don't have these layer lines. I might also make them just a little bit, little bit thicker so they actually survive. Uh, I mean, not that this one didn't, this one survived the biggest explosion this robot has ever seen because of that wrap of aluminium tape. Uh, but like I said, that means that this, this can work, I just need them to be slightly stronger. But because that survived, the shock then went into the robot and forced the two prongs at the front apart so that the drum could come out. Um, and that has just basically yeah, blown apart the mountings holding this front piece together. And then I'm pretty sure, looking at that footage, that the drum then actually hit the motor, which is why this motor then came off. Now, I am not 100% sure on that though because there's not too much actual damage to this motor. Um, there looks like there's a few marks where it could have kind of been hit, but other than that, I don't, I'm not really sure exactly how this broke off, but that also broke off. So that's a, a thing that needs to be fixed eventually too. Um, and then, yeah, the big issue here was wheels. This wheel is free spinning, uh, um, kind of, sort of, it, yeah. I'm not sure if you can see that too well, but it free spins now, and that's still mounted to the motor shaft. So I do need to do a much, much better job of hooking my wheels to my motor shafts because just having them with a printed D shaft has just destroyed those. And that's why I was having drive issues in that final, ver um, final fight. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff to consider on the redesign of this. And I think the, the big things are gonna be weight placement and attaching points. So 
I'm going to keep using these beta bars because I had them cut and they are awesome looking. So we're gonna keep using these, but we're gonna redesign the rest of this frame. What I think we're gonna do is we're going to shrink this HDPE section, like shrink the, the height of the robot. Obviously this height at the front has to stay, but the rest of this height is gonna be shrunk down. We're going to use some better wheels. I think what we're actually going to do instead of this thing that I've done before, we're gonna use some grub screws in there and we're going to use some actual hubs and some uh, hubs off some RC cars. I'll probably end up using the silicon wheels I showed off in last week's video because those worked amazingly well for tires on those RC hubs, but we will be going back to RC hubs and that will mean shrinking the entire thickness of this robot at the back here down quite a bit. Um, they're also going to replace all of these 3D printed corners and things that broke in here with aluminium. Uh, I've just found that you can get some like rivet nuts or something they're called that basically you can push a nut into a thin sheet of aluminium or steel or whatever. So that is going to work really, really well for something like this. And that's actually the other thing that needs to happen is that the bolts need to go from the outside in rather than the inside out, which is what they did in here. So all of the like little bolts up the back here are going from the inside out and they just, they were really complicated to put in and it made the whole robot harder to build and harder to rebuild and harder to fix on the fly. So uh, yeah, those those are some, some big fixes that need to happen. But like I said, we're going to just basically scrap all of this. All of this is going on my shelf as a uh, an example of what not to do and we're going to redo everything. That will be a future video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next video.